I need an RV to explore places I've never been. And I need an RV that feels like home. I need an RV that can fit in a parking space. And I need more space. I need something that I can drive anywhere. And I need to shower in a place that I know is clean. If we're going to be traveling together, we're going to need to find a compromise. I agree. Can you compromise? Somewhat. I can't. Hey, come on. All right, I'll try. Well, we're here at the 2024 Florida RV Super Show trying to find the perfect RV. Is it going to be a Class A, Class B, something in between, a trailer perhaps, or a truck camper? We don't know. Let's oh. go find out. Let's go. Hey there, I'm Rose. And I'm Dan. And, and we, we are, are the Half-Ass half -ass Travelers. Travelers. guys, Dan and Rose from Half-Ass Travelers. And we're coming to you not so live from the 2024 Florida RV Super, Super, Super Show. <laughs> Florida RV Super Show in Tampa, Florida. And as you can see, we're as half-assed as ever. Over the next few days, we're gonna be walking around the Florida RV Super Show looking for the perfect RV. Yes. All right, let's take a moment to talk about what constitutes the perfect RV. Each of us is gonna have our own ideas. Let's start with you, Rose. Well, for starters, I would love more space. Um, what we have right now is just a little bit uh, too small for us. Um, I would also like to have a larger kitchen because I like to cook, so a kitchen, kitchen space is, is very important to me. Um, another thing is comfort. Uh, basically, in what we have right now, there's only the couch in the back, and which we use for the bed, and there's really no other seating. So um, I would like some more of that. And one other thing, a dry bath. Dry bath that's larger, that you can fit into the shower. And, and when you say dry bath, you mean a separate shower? A separate shower, yes. From the toilet, yeah. Right, right. So those are the most important things for me. What's important for you? Well, I got to tell you, uh, I like being versatile. A, it's got to fit in our driveway. We true. do not want to have to go yeah, put true. the unit into storage. We've only got a certain length between the garage door and the sidewalk, which is less than 25 feet. And that's going to be a deal breaker. It's got to be, it's got to be small, compact, but th that also helps because I like to enjoy the drive. To me, that's half the fun. And if I'm driving around this huge trailer or I'm driving around this huge unit, you know, it's going to be a little more stressful than driving around it's something that's yeah. a little more versatile and, uh, and shorter. So uh, that's probably my main concern. But I do want more space. I do want a dry bath. I do want the, I, I, I feel your pain yeah. with, the, uh, <laughs> with, with some of your concerns. So let's go. And We're going to scour the, the show RV. to see if we can find the perfect RV. Let's go. Well, here we are at the American coach section and you might recognize that van behind us because that is the shorter version of the van that we are currently in and we're looking to possibly upgrade. But they've got some really nice coaches here. They don't have any 22 footers here. We've kind of got the middle of the road uh, van. They've got 19 footers, they got 24 footers. But there's a lot of versatility in these units. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of different floor plans and we love our American coach patriot uh, like we said we really we really don't want to trade it in but by the same token we have to compromise we need a little more space all right so here's what we're going to do we're going to walk around the show we're going to take a look at a lot of different units a lot of different things there is so much here there's there's at least 1500 rvs here trailers vans class c's class a's huge we're going to take a look at a lot of units we're going to take you with us as we go do some walkthroughs and then we're going to try to narrow it down to our top four, four choices 
Well, Rose, how about a truck camper? Uh, no, I need way more space. You need more space? Some of these truck campers are pretty big. In fact, let's go take a look at that one behind us. Okay. Oh my God, you have got to see this. This is a truck camper. This rides in the back of a pickup truck. Come with me, come with me. Are you kidding me right now? There's a fireplace in here. There's a, a large TV. There's a bigger kitchen than we saw in a lot of the class B pluses with more counter space. There's a huge couch here and a smaller couch in the back. There's a picture window. I cannot believe this is it sitting in the back of a pickup truck. This is a little weird. You need to have a little bit. I can see you sitting on the thing. Rose sitting here dangling her feet, you know, underneath. But, but other than that, it has a separate bathroom and shower. Come take a look at this, Rose. Look at this. This slides out of the way to close the bathroom. Oh, that's neat. And there's a shower. That's genius. And look, there's a king-size bed in this. King-size bed and a TV. I don't know if you can see it. Skylights, windows for ventilation. This thing has everything you need. Unbelievable. Let's go look on the, at the kitchen on the other side. Look at this, hon. A full-size refrigerator and separate freezer. Yeah, yeah, how about that? Storage, a really remarkable level of storage in such a small place. We are standing in the back of a pickup truck. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. You know, we really didn't consider a truck camper. We kind of like laughed it off. But to see something like this and what they can do with the engineering, it, it's amazing. Now this is a very large unit, requires a big truck and it's probably not the most uh, easy to drive around uh, with the weight shifting and all that. But let's go take a look at a couple of smaller size floor plans real quick, just to see if they're anywhere as nice as this one. Okay, so that was the Mammoth 11.6. Now we're just gonna take a quick look at the Yukon 11.6 and see what's different about this unit from that one. Oh, <laughs> I see it already. A little bit different floor plan. Looks pretty standard up front, but this unit has the double TV watching mega chairs in the back. I mean, this is like Captain Kirk. And Rose, you can be Mr. Oh, and Spock. You can be Skipper, and I'll be Gilligan. I, I like that better. Okay. <laughs> Look at this picture window, too. Oh, that's really pretty. And we have a lake view. The lake view is no extra charge. All right, let's check out one more floor plan. All right, this is the Cascade, and you'll notice something different about this unit. The entry is actually on the back, which I think is pretty much standard for most truck campers. Let's take a look. Wow. This is a completely different floor plan. The kitchen's right there at the entrance, a huge kitchen, huge refrigerator. You've got your mega chairs here in front of the TV. Around the corner is the bathroom. It's got the full sink, the high swing your legs toilet, and the shower right around the corner. Yep. And if you look up here, you'll notice that the bed's a little bit narrower They've got more storage up here, up in the front. Bed's a little narrower, but it's still, I think it's doable because you've got this extra area on the side. TV and the dining area over here. Wow, they fit a lot in these truck campers. Well, we looked at the truck campers here and unfortunately they're just not gonna have enough space for our needs. So truck campers are gonna have to be crossed off the list. 
All right, Rose, look behind you. All right, that is the ultimate in space. You said it's, you wanted something that felt like home? Yes, yes! There you go, 499 square feet. I'll take it. And it's even on wheels. Yes. Yeah, now, veto. I've got a veto. Rose, how about a tiny trailer? <laughs> no way. No way? No way. I don't think she's doing the tiny trailer. No. Moving on. What about this overlanding beast? Uh, I'm not feeling the trailer. No trailer? No. All right, we're gonna keep looking. All right, look at this fun little trailer. Not really for Rose and I, but this is just really neat. We figured we had to add it in here. This is the little guy shadow. And look at this, this is so cool. You're, it's got a, a, a kitchen out the back. It's got the bed, you just haul this behind you. When you need to stop for the night, you just set it all up and you go to sleep. My issue is <clears throat> getting in and out. Ah, yeah, but plenty of workspace. Let me get my laptop. Yeah, look, it's even got a, it's got a, like a, a window re, uh, air conditioner. It's got a small TV. It's got the sound system. Hey, look, there's a seat for me, too. Oh, you want to come in, too? This is the little guy, Mini Max FX, and this is right up our alley. Look at this. I feel like I'm home. Rose, you said you wanted to be like home. Yes. Here you go. It's like our backyard. <laughs> well, let's take a look inside. This is a really neat little unit. Right inside the door, you've got the kitchen area. You've got the Dometic cooktop, a pretty large sink. You've got the wet bath. And for a trailer this size to have this big of a wet bath, it's, it's just pretty impressive. Back here, we've got a really good sized fridge and freezer. Again, in, this, in a unit this small, they fit a lot in here. Got your microwave oven, could be convection oven, I'm not sure. Some storage underneath, plenty of storage. Your sound system, but this is a neat a part right here. I'm in the rear dinette area, and this is more than a dinette. Look at the windows in here. You've got this huge picture window in the back. There's a window on each side. I guarantee you when you open them, you get some good ventilation. It's a great place to hang out if you've got to work, an excellent workstation, or if you just want to eat something or have the drink of your choice while you're hanging out in the campground, this is a great way to do it. Well done, little guy. Well, we saw some very nice travel trailers. Oh my gosh. And there's a lot of advantages to to have to getting the trailer, the travel trailer, uh, the, the cost, they are very inexpensive. They've got some really neat floor plans, some of them, but uh, I think that we're really not looking to trailer something around the country, especially something that may be a little as squirrely at high speeds or at, uh, at higher speeds yeah. like the travel, tra travel trailer would be. And if we were gonna do a travel trailer, we would need a bigger one. And again, that's, uh, it's gonna cut into my enjoyment factor of driving cross country because 50% of my enjoyment comes from the actual drive. Agreed. So, travel trailers? No bueno. No bueno. This is the Tagoda Luxury Toy Hauler. Now, when you're talking about fifth wheel trailers, this has a bunch of amazing features that I wanna show you. Take a look at this. When you enter the RV, you come right into this kitchen. This kitchen has an island in the center, not to mention a residential fridge and a huge oven and gas cooktop. This is amazing. And directly across from that, this luxurious sofa. Ah, oh my God, so comfy. Right in front of the fireplace and the huge TV. And that's not all. Come back here. This is an area where you can store a golf cart, maybe even a small UTV. And you pull it out at the campsite and it turns into 
this gaming area, relaxation area, dining room, whatnot. There is a full-size bath up front, full-size shower. It's, it's basically a residential shower. And look at those shower heads. This is absolutely beautiful. And as you come in here, all right, as we leave the bathroom, we come into the master bedroom up front. A huge, looks like almost a king size bed. It's got the entertainment system, huge closet. This is a home. I can't believe this is an RV trailer. This is a home. And back here off of the rec area, I'll call it the rec area, there's a half bathroom back here. You don't have to tromp your muddy feet all the way through the RV. An excellent feature. And how about this for a bonus? Look up here for the kids or for the more adventurous adults. It's a loft bed. That is the coolest thing. There's a speaker up there. I think there's probably some outlets up there so the kids can plug in their electronics to escape from the mean parents. One of the greatest features of this trailer, right outside the patio doors here, on the ramp that is used to offload your UTV or golf court or whatever, or motorcycles, look at this. An elevated patio area for sunning or just hanging out. You're elevated above the ground. You don't have to worry about critters crawling in or on you. you can sit out there, have a cocktail, get some sun. It's a beautiful thing. Well, we had to eliminate the gooseneck trailers from contention for pretty much the same reason as the travel trailers. We really didn't want to be pulling a trailer. Uh, I mean, the goosenecks do handle a little better than the travel trailers, and and they are beautiful inside. They are. It, like I said, though, it's just driving. Just practical for us. Yeah, dr and driving's half the fun. And and the ones that we would want are too big to fit in our driveway, so we had to eliminate those. Yeah. Prevo always seems to steal the show with their million-plus-dollar coaches. They are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Rose, don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. I am vetoing that right away. <laughs> but we figured we'd take a look at this small Class A. This is the Winnebago Vista Canyonlands Edition. And you can see it's got the National Park Foundation badging. It's a really nice Class A. I particularly like the look of those black rims. That is a beautiful look with the gray and dark gray and gray exterior. Let's take a look inside. As you can see with any Class A, just this driving compartment makes the space look so large. And back here, we've got the couch, full-size couch, oh, comfy couch after a long day of walking around the RV show. Also, the dining area with the double benches, same cushions, really comfy, overhead TV. And look at this, look at this kitchen. Honey, you'll finally be able to make a decent meal. Just kidding, Rose is an excellent, excellent chef. You notice I didn't say cook. There's lots of storage in here. We're moving on. Lots of storage, a nice cooktop, gas cooktop, and look, it's got the large fridge that we like, and a lot of space. We can walk by each other without having to go to the bullpen. Yay. Yes, that's huge. And back here is the bedroom, a large, super large, Looks like a king size bed to me. It may be close. We'll call it an RV king. Wow, lots of space, lots of light, TVs, storage, you name it, it's got it. We like. And I want it. <laughs> and look at this bathroom. This is a real bathroom. Plenty of room, a huge shower. Well, huge by RV standards. Again, six feet tall, I'm not even close. Plenty of space. Well, we looked at the Class A RV and it surely has all the space that Rose wants. Is this like home? Oh my gosh. The Class A's are like home. Here's my problem. I wanna be able to go anywhere. I am not on board with the Class A. Unfortunately, I have to veto the Class A. I'm sorry, hon. Maybe in a few years. Okay. But we're still adventurous. We still wanna get out there. And that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. Okay. I know we said we were really interested in a Class A and until we saw this. This is the Thor Vegas 24-1. Yeah, that's right, 24 feet and a few inches. It's a Class A. It's one of the smallest Class A's available. Let's take a look inside. 
Well, this is one of the advantages of having a Class A. I mean, look at all this space up here in the driver's compartment. I mean, there's a lot of room where the passenger could even whip out a lap laptop and work while on the road. There's all kinds of, when you're parked, storage space. Uh, it just really makes the unit feel that much bigger. Think about putting a windshield out over the hood of your B or B+, and that's what it's like in here. It's really nice. In the back, we've got this double couch here. Uh, there's a TV right across the way above the door, and we are across from the kitchen area. Now, again, like some of the other units, this kitchen is tiny, but at least they give you the flip-up door, the flip-up countertop. That is huge. And the sink, look at the size of this sink. Wow. That is a big sink. It's also got the Dometic cooktop, if I can get it open. There we go, a double burner stove. Double burner cooktop, I should say. Uh, that looks like an induction uh, microwave, but I might be mistaken on that. There's a full-size refrigerator and freezer. There's a lot of storage space. And in the bathroom, that's right, got that thing where the door won't open all the way. I'm not sure why they do this. This is a total turnoff for me anyway. I think Rose is not happy with it either. I know you're limited in space. Uh, there's got to be some other way to do the doors where it's not doing this. Okay. It just, uh, it's a turnoff. This is a nice area back here. We've got the twin beds on either side. Uh, you know, this is, it's, it's like you're in the same bed, but you've got the separation, so it's easier to get in and out of. I think that's a really good thing, uh, and it gives you plenty of room. We really like that feature. It's the standard bathroom, dry bath. It's got the shower and the shower curtain rather than a plastic one, and just enough room to do your business. No frills. Well, we've also looked at some Class A's and Super C's. And I can tell you right now, we just don't have the space for an A, even the Vegas. The Vegas, I think, was 24 feet yeah. and change. Uh, we weren't really thrilled with the floor plan in that. Uh, if you're gonna go with a Class A, you're gonna wanna do something that's really nice. And you know, it's not to say that we wouldn't do something like that in the future. It's just not for us right now. We need to be able to park our RV in, in the driveway. So that kind of eliminates the Class A's and the class B uh, super C's. So, hon? What are you gonna do? <laughs> we have to eliminate those. Well, if you're looking for an expedition vehicle, this is the Storyteller Overland GXV Hilt. And this thing is a beast. A go anywhere, do anything RV to satisfy all of your off-roading needs. So let's go take a look inside. As you come inside, you can immediately see the quality of this build. Uh, up over the cab is this huge king plus size bed with the skylight. This is absolutely gorgeous. It looks like there's a little compartment to access the truck. So you could actually get stuff in and out of the truck without going outside. It's got a wet bath, the one downside, but when you're dealing with a truck of this size, it's not surprising. A huge countertop on the kitchen. in the kitchen. It's got the, I can't get it open right now. There we go. Dual induction cooktops and a large fridge freezer this is quality stuff i mean comes with red bull you gotta love it yes and the microwave convection oven and then look at this area in the back there's windows everywhere there's a 270 degree view out back here this is a great place to hang out uh this would be the perfect rv for someone who is looking to go anywhere and do anything and do it in the comforts of your own home. Is sounds this not like, perfect, time? Sounds like something you love. 
Yeah, except for one thing. Rose, I think the party's over. Oh. Take a gander down on the counter. <laughs> Hang on, let's put the light on. Rose, take a look at this. <sighs> yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, no. A little bit out of the half ass traveler price range, but you never know if we get enough subscribers, maybe someday you could be touring with us in this beautiful Hilt Storyteller Overland Expedition Vehicle. But as of right now, we're moving on. Anybody who's done even the littlest bit of research on Class Bs is familiar with what's behind me. This is the Winnebago Rebel. It's a 19-foot Class B RV, and it is made for the off-road. The Rebel is built on the Mercedes Sprinter 2500 4x4 chassis. Winnebago fits a lot inside this small space. Right behind the driver and passenger seats is this other seat, suitable for one and a half passenger, or maybe two small passengers. Further back, we've got the decent sized refrigerator it's more of a kind of a a, a frat fridge and the kitchen area is a little bit tight the bathroom in the revel is decked out so it can either be used for storage or a bathroom but not both at the same time obviously in the back here we've got the bed and one of the reasons they can fit so much in this small space is this bed rises up out of the way and gives you access to everything you've got stored in the back and you can, the best thing is you can leave the bed made. It's cool. We really like that feature. However, one issue that we didn't particularly like is it's not a very wide bed. It's maybe, it's not a queen size. It's probably somewhere like a super twin. Uh, it's not a lot of space, uh, but what do you expect? It's a 19 foot RV. The Rebel would definitely give us access to wherever we need to go and it fits in a parking space, but Rose, what's the issue? It's too small. Yes, it doesn't have the space that Rose wants. And again, this is a compromise. So we're gonna have to pass on the Revel, unfortunately. But for those of you who don't need the extra space, this thing is an absolute beast. It's beautiful. We can agree on that, right? Yes. Yes. I wanted a Revel. Next time. Next time. This is the 2024 Dazzle 2JB Class B RV. It's built on the Ram Promaster chassis, and it's got a rear lounge. Let's take a look inside. So up front, they've got this seating to the side. Uh, as you saw in some of the other RVs, the seating points forward. This is a side-facing seat. It looks like there's seatbelts there so they can be used during the vehicle operation. It's got the standard kitchen here on the side. Very limited amount of countertop space. It's got a Dometic cooktop, gas cooktop, and a Dometic fridge. A decent sized fridge does not have a separate freezer. Uh, the bathroom is tiny, absolutely minuscule. I don't know how you would possibly shower in there, but it is a small unit, so it, that's to be expected. I think the unit's only like 20, a little more than 20 feet long. Uh, but the rear lounge is nice, it's a very comfortable rear lounge. It's very similar to our Patriot van, it's a little bit wider. Uh, a little bit wider opening it looks like, uh, but there isn't storage up here like in our van. Storage in this van is very limited. Well, hon, what do you think of this small RV? <laughs> no bueno. Yeah, the Dazzle's a little bit small. It's a 20 foot Class B, and really we have a Class B now that I think has everything that we need, mm -hmm. except for space. So I think we're gonna have to lean more towards the B plus and possibly a C. Uh, we will see. We'll keep looking. Mm -hmm. Starting in three, two, one. Woo! Look at that vertical leap.
Uh, behind me is the Airstream Atlas, a B plus unit. It's about 24 feet long and the fit and finishes are top notch. Let's go take a look. The Airstream Atlas is very elegant inside. Up front, we've got a large sofa, leather sofa. Across from the sofa is a TV that folds down into the cabinetry. The cabinets are first class lockable cabinets. It's a really, really beautifully designed coach. If you look back here, uh, it's kind of a small kitchen area, not a lot of counter space, but the space that they have, they've used in a smart way. Love having the garbage right there on the countertop. It makes things so easy. It's a nice size fridge, separate freezer. That's a win-win. And look at this bathroom. There's a separate shower. It's not a wet bath. It's a dry bath. Look at the woodwork in the shower. Plenty of room to do your business. And look at all this storage. You can't see all the storage here. <laughs> look at all this storage back here. I mean, there is ample storage. Definitely a B plus. What do you think, hon? A lot more room than our camper? A lot more. And behind the sofa bed is a Murphy, behind the sofa yeah. is a Murphy bed. And you know how much we love the Murphy bed because you don't have to keep making the bed every day. Thumbs up. The Atlas has one slide out and it's not a full wall slide out. It's just the front room, but it's plenty for the sofa and Murphy bed. We're gonna take a look at something a little bit different. This is the Chinook Maverick. It's a class B plus. It's about 24 feet long. And there's a surprise here. Let's go in and check. Oh yeah, no door. You're gonna love this. As with many of the Chinooks, the Maverick has the doorway entryway in the back and that's gonna allow for a little bit different floor plan. Let's go take a look. Right off the bat, we can see that it's got something that we really like, the separate shower from the bathroom. And the bathroom is mighty spacious. When Rose comes up here, she'll be able to show you that. Uh, it's got a nice size refrigerator and freezer. It's a Dometic uh, microwave convection oven, which is really nice. The kitchen area doesn't have a lot of space. It's got a huge sink, but look at this. The cooktop is over here. So you do have a little more space over here. That's interesting. You hardly ever see that. As we go forward, it's got the breakfast nook area, bench seating, very soft and, and uh, cushiony seats. And it's got this nice sofa and it's a convertible sofa. So this is the bed. That's a little bit of a downside for Rose and I, because we were really looking for something that we didn't have to make uh, every day. You can see that bathroom's got a really nice large sink, plenty of area for taking care of business. Here's something we're not too much of a fan of. These cabinets kind of taper to the bottom. It's taking away a lot of the space. I understand why they did it, because uh, it really looks nice to have them come out like this, and it makes it look a lot more spacious, but you're losing so much room in the cabinets. This one, I mean, there's hardly any room back there. All the rooms up top, it just, it doesn't make much sense to me. I'd rather see the cabinets come all the way out like a standard one, but they, are, they do seem to be high quality, so that's a plus. This unit is built on the Ford Transit chassis. Uh, the access way between the front and back is a little bit tight, but you can see they put this wall up here because they had to mount the TV, uh, but it makes for a little awkward tra uh, traversing from the front to the back. All right, here's the battery compartment. You can see the, the Maverick has two AGM batteries. We're a little bit uh, partial to the lithium batteries, but that keeps costs down. And you got another compartment, the Onan 4K generator. Got to keep those batteries charged. And on the other side, we've got plenty of storage, plenty of outdoor storage. Pretty standard for the Class Bs. B plus. Pretty standard for the Class B pluses.
Behind me is a Class B Plus RV. Now you may be asking yourself, what's the difference between a B Plus and a Class C RV? The word on the street is if there's a sleeper cab above the driving compartment, that's a Class C. If there's no sleeper cab or there's storage or something else, then that's a Class B Plus. Also, B Pluses usually have a more aerodynamic design as you'll see behind me. They're a little narrower and they're not like a big box. So that's the difference if anybody's asking. All right, let's talk a little bit about Class Cs. We weren't really interested in a regular Class C, the boxy Class C. However, some of these, what we thought were B pluses, are actually Cs because they've got the sleeper over the cockpit. So it is possible that we will be considering some Class C motorhomes. This is the Winnebago View 24D, and this unit has a feature that we really like, the Murphy bed. Let's take a look. The View is built on the Mercedes-Benz chassis. Uh, which is really a plus because we like the ride and the fit and finishes of the Mercedes-Benz cockpit. It's really nice. When we came into the view, we noticed something very unexpected. Look up here. There's actually a bed over the driver's compartment. That makes this a Class C, not a B+. Also, look at this. We've got this entire U-shaped bench. I like the U-shaped bench. It even has cushions that allow you to extend the bench if you like to sit with your feet up or whatever. I think that that's a great feature. Back here, we've got the sofa and Murphy bed. We love the Murphy bed, as you all know, because we can leave the bedding on it. We don't have to keep making and unmaking the bed every time we stop somewhere. It's a really nice feature. We kind of like how they kind of fuse together the entertainment section across from the couch and the uh, bench seating area and the kitchen area it's all here there's a lot of counter space here in fact look at this rose is going to love this a double sink where do you ever see that in an rv that is amazing it's got an induction cooktop and a gas cooktop another bonus it's got the convection oven and a very large refrigerator and separate freezer it's beautiful there is one downside with this unit. It seems like the bathroom is not quite so large as some of the others we've seen at this length. There's plenty of room. It just seems a little bit tighter. And I think that there was a trade-off from having so much space up front that there's a little less room in the bathroom, but it is still plenty of room for everything we need. So this is the Winnebago View 24J. And the difference with this model, it's almost identical to the one we just saw, except for it's got a rear corner bed. And if you know anything about Rose and I, you'll know that this ain't gonna cut it. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely not going with the J. Everything else is pretty nice. It's got the really nice bathroom. I like this setup better than the one that's jammed in the back. Uh, it just seems a little more spacious. Uh, so there's one thing we like about this one and one thing we don't really like. So what do you think, Rose? Is the Winnebago View a contender? It's pretty nice. It's got a lot of space and I love the kitchen. You know how I like to cook. Yep, so. and it's got the big bed and it's got the big fridge. It does. It's checking off almost all the boxes. Yep. This is gonna be a tough choice. All right, the first contender in the Class B Plus Battle of the Finest RVs. <laughs> Believe it or not, it is the first RV we saw when we came into the show. Right as we walked in, right to the right, was the Pleasureway XLTS. Yep. Uh, it, it has everything that we need, everything that we said we wanted. It also has a very similar floor plan. To what we have now, but more spacious. Yeah, as you can see, I mean, this is, it's more homey. Uh, it's very bright. I love the colors of the upholstery and the cabinets. Uh, the refrigerator is large. It does not have a separate freezer, which we would have liked to have had, but it does have a nice dry bath and a and a separate shower, and that was a must for us. Oh yeah, that's very important. It's also got a ton more storage and the ability to trailer our tow vehicle, because yes, we are probably gonna end up getting a tow vehicle. That's gonna be a different search, and we'll include that on a future video. So let's take another quick look at this contender, and then we'll move on and check out what contender number two is. Yes, let's go. This is the Pleasure Way Plateau XLTS. Now this is a Class B plus RV. However, this particular model is 22 feet, nine inches long. So it's got pretty much the same footprint 
as our Class B van. And as you're gonna see from the inside, it's got a ton more space inside. So let's go take a look. The Plateau XLTS is built on a Sprinter 3500 chassis. This is identical to our Class B van, at least the driver's compartment from here forward is. Uh, we love the Mercedes, almost everything about it, except for the crosswood assist, but we're not gonna get, get into that now. But we love it, it's a great driving position, it's very comfortable, and there's, as you can see, there's plenty of room behind the driver's seat for you folks that are not vertically challenged. All right, let's take a look inside the Plateau XLTS. The first thing you'll notice about the XLTS is that this is a rear lounge mo model. It's got this huge living area back here. I mean, it's like a living room. This, these seat cushions are so soft and cushy. This is pretty much the same floor plan that we've got in our current Class B, but these cushions are much thicker. We probably wouldn't even need the memory foam, and that makes it a lot easier because we don't have to store it. Now, there's a little less storage overhead. As you can see, this compartment back here is very tiny. However, there's some outside storage that kind of makes up for that. We love the rear lounge area in these vans. It's one of the things that we like most about our American coach. And this is like the rear lounge on steroids. Facing the rear lounge is the entertainment center. As you can see, they've got the television there. It's right above the bed. Looks like there's a sound bar and some controls for the audio system. Check this out. Look at the size of this refrigerator. Holy cow. I wouldn't be surprised to find an ice maker in there somewhere. I don't see it right now, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it. Huge fridge, major plus. You can see the vents for the heat are out from under the bed. That's a huge plus as well. Look at the size of this kitchen. Rose loves this kitchen. It is about three, three to four inches wider than the Class B van. You can certainly see the advantages of a B plus over a B when it comes to inside space. I mean, this, this kitchen is, is amazing. It's got the induction cooktop that she likes. Plenty of storage, there's a lots of drawers. But let me show you the part that Rose likes the best. Check out this bathroom, oh my God. This unit has an actual dry bath. It's not much bigger than the wet bath in our Class B van, but they managed to squeeze a shower and a porcelain toilet inside. In fact, look at the size of this shower. I'm gonna hop in here real quick. Now I'm six feet tall and I've got plenty of headroom. I'm gonna close this. There's plenty of room in here for me to move around. I mean, but it's, it's, it's not an incredible amount of space, but it certainly will do the job. Thumbs up for a dry bath. There's one more consideration when we're looking at this coach and it's right behind us, the MSRP. This coach, because it's on a Sprinter chassis, because it's so nice and elegant and has all the trims and trimmings, Fit and trimming, fits yeah, and yeah, trimming, yeah, sure. however you say it. It's a little bit on the pricey side. I mean, it's a lot on the pricey side. So that's definitely gonna be a factor that we have to take into consideration. Yep. All right, let's move on and check contender number two. Here we are with contender number two. This is the Thor Transit 350 HD all wheel drive, class B plus. This is built on the Ford Transit chassis, and that's gonna keep the price down a bit from the unit that we just looked at, but Rose absolutely loves this floor plan, and I like it too. So let's get a review of what's inside. The one thing that we like the most about the Thor Transit is the interior. I mean, look how much space is in here. For a Class B Plus, and I believe this is 20, just 24 feet, yeah. um, the dinette, is so super comfy. It's got plenty of room for us. Very convenient. It's, it's a good workspace. It's a good hangout space. And you've got the TV right across there. You could chill in the dinette and watch your TV and be very comfortable doing it. And the other thing is you've got a wide open area to the bedroom. Now, there's not really a dividing line between the bedroom and the dinette. I mean, there is a curtain rail here that you could hang a curtain from. Uh, in fact, there is a curtain right here but it's just Rose and I traveling most of the time. So really it's, it's not a deal breaker. Right. The only thing that is questionable about this unit is we're not too familiar with the Ford Transit chassis. We're definitely gonna have to do a test drive. And the other thing Rose had some concerns with was the shower curtain and the shower 
uh, it seems to me it might get a little bit messy. So we definitely have to do some more research on that. But we do like the fact that the refrigerator and freezer are separate. Uh, mm -hmm. And the kitchen area is decent. It's, it's, it's enough room for us. And they have the, the feature that we like the best. Rose, look at that. Thor is doing it right. Well, anyway, this is it. They can picture it being flipped <laughs> up. All right. And the last thing we like is this skylight up here. It makes it so light and airy in the unit. Uh, it's just, we, we really like this floor plan. So let's take a closer look. The first thing we notice in this unit is it's got this nice slide with the uh, dining table here. I really like when they do these dining tables. It's, it's, a, it's so versatile. You can use it to, to lounge. You can use it to work. You can use it to eat. It's just, and, and it's a wide open space. This unit also, you'll notice there is no hallway like in the other unit. You're immediately, the bed is right here. So if you're traveling with others, that might be a little bit awkward, but for just two people, this is perfect because it keeps it all wide open and nice. We really like that. Let's look at the kitchen. Pretty standard, a huge sink. I mean, a huge sink. And you've got the cooktop the microwave and convection oven. You've got a medium sized fridge with separate freezer, same as in the other unit. The bed looks like it's pretty wide. It's not quite, a, it's like a RV queen, I think is what they call it. But also you've got this nice storage space in the back for all your clothes. Let's take a look in the bathroom. Okay, it's a dry bath. You've got, that's a pretty decent sized shower. You've got the elevated, the raised toilet, I like that. You've got the sink and the cabinet, and you also have some cabinets overhead and underneath. I'm six feet tall, probably six one with the shoes on, and I've got plenty of space. There's another good eight to 10 inches above my head. And I like the curtain, believe it or not, because when your elbows are hitting, it's not really hitting the plastic. The one downside of the curtain is, if it comes off of here, you're getting the floor all wet. Rose just told me that of all the floor plans we've seen at the show so far, this is her favorite. So this is definitely a contender. Not only that, because it's a Ford Transit on the all-wheel drive chassis, I might add, it's also going to keep the cost down. I mean, look at the show pricing on this unit. And when you compare this to some of the other units we've seen, it's half the price. The 2024 Thor Gemini all-wheel drive Transit 30, or 350 is contender number two man there's a lot to say in the name of this, this unit but it's really nice i, I think we, what we like the best is the floor plan it's very open and very airy very yeah nice. it's 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 really a good option for us uh traveling just we're traveling just the two of us so uh, privacy is not that big a concern a couple of the issues we had some of the fit and finishes aren't quite as nice as some of the other units we've yeah. seen the bathroom's a little bit tight. The shower curtain, eh, not so sure if we like that or not. Time will tell. We just don't want to make a mess in the bathroom. Uh, and also the Ford Transit, we're not too familiar with the chassis. It may drive nicely, but that's going to require a test drive. So we'll, see. we'll have to do that in the future. But this is contender number two. Now we're going to move on to contender number three. All right, now we're at contender number three. This is the 2024 Thor Tiburon 24 FB. Uh, as you can see, uh, the show price here is $151,995. This is on the Mercedes Sprinter chassis, so it's going to be a little higher than the Force Transit chassis. Uh, let's take a look inside. There's some things we like about the interior that we liked about the last unit, too. One of the things we really like about this unit is the same thing we liked about the last two. There is a ton of space in here. I mean, and look at this kitchen. Uh, it's got a huge countertop. I know Rose likes the huge kitchen. It's also got the TV overhead opposite of the dinette that we like. Again, a very comfy dinette, not quite as comfy as the last one, but it's, it'll do the job. And it's also got this feature, which is a sofa facing the TV, but it's also got a Murphy bed that comes down. And we like the Murphy bed units because we can hide away all of our bedding and everything and leave it in place. And then when it's time to go to sleep, we just flip it down. I don't think I'm gonna be able to pull it, but yeah, it just flips down and it's out of the way during the day and then it's available at night. And that is huge for us. It is. Now, if we have one thing that we didn't really care about, 
or too much about was again, it's got the shower curtain in the shower. It's, a, it's kind of tight in the bathroom, but there's a lot of stuff in that bathroom. We're gonna take a little closer look at, is there anything else you like or don't like? I love all of it. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna take a little closer look at everything inside this coach. Okay, I may have mislabeled this unit because it does, as you can see, have a sleeper on top. Now, whether or not that's a class C or a class B plus, it is very aerodynamic on the outside. Some people say that's still a B plus, but our definition is if it's got a sleeper, it's a C. Doesn't really bother us too much, again, because it's got the aerodynamics. We already mentioned the overhead sleeping compartment, but that could be used for storage or sleeping. So it's not so big a deal. I mean, it's just Rose and I traveling, but if we wanted to bring the grandkids, or the kids, then there would be sleeping space available. We also mentioned that this is on the Mercedes Sprinter chassis, and you know we like that. As we look over at the dinette, they've got the usual drawers underneath the dinette. These ones are very large and deep. And the cabinetry is, again, the soft closed cabinets. No latch, but the hinge does a good job of keeping the cabinet shut. There is a curtain around the bed. So if you do need privacy, you, you have that option. Very comfortable sofa bed. Here's the Murphy. <laughs> Some artwork on the back of the Murphy. Folds down with the bed. And then we've got the mirror here that makes the RV look even bigger. Over on the other side, Rose's favorite feature. Lots of huge cabinets, the TV. Rose especially likes this massive sink. And this piece is not as heavy this is more of a plastic top. It's not as heavy as the granite. I kind of like that because it's a little easier to store. You'll see huge cabinetry underneath. Lots of room. The drawers are extra wide. We've got the convection oven microwave. Big drawers. You got the Dometic cooktop, gas burners, two of them. And we've got a nice size refrigerator, separate freezer. We really like that. Clothing storage or other storage, very large. Lots of drawers. They lock in place. Now nah, they don't really lock in place. It seems like there's some kind of a magnetic lock that's keeping these doors in place. But the drawers, they're being held in, but it looks like by friction. Again, look at the storage in the bathroom, though. There is a lot of room back here. And you see the ladder for the uh, overhead bed and a table stored away in here. More drawers, towel racks, me double medicine cabinet, and a shower. Now it's got this curtain, sort of curtain, plastic thing. We're not really sure about this. It does have a magnetic close. Um, we're gonna have to think about this one a little bit. It's, it's a little bit different. Um, I mean, if your elbows hit it, you're not gonna bruise them. Uh, so that may be a plus, may not be. We're just not too familiar with it. And it's got the regular plastic toilet. We prefer a porcelain toilet, but it'll do the job for your business. This coach has a lot of outside storage. Look at the size of this compartment and door. <laughs> it's got an Onan 3200 generator. and even more storage around the back. This is a single slide unit and there is some more storage under there, but I am not gonna, not young enough to go under there and open those cabinets, but you can imagine what they look like. The Tiburon has a lot of the things that we are looking for. It is rather large at 24 feet uh, it, but it has a lot of space inside and it's it's very wide. I think it's wider than the other units that we looked at, but the fit and finishes are, are really nice. Um, a couple of criticisms, just the cabinetry, not so sure about that. And the bathroom, shower, door, plastic liner, not sure about that either. Uh, but that's but it's, it is. It's because definitely a contender. Is, this is definitely a contender. Rose really likes it. I do. All right, let's go to contender number four. 
folks, we've got a, it's not a B plus, it's technically a C. This is the 2024 Tiffin Wayfarer 25RW. It's got some features we really like. It's got the Murphy bed. It's got a huge shower and it's got some very comfy recliners. Let's go inside and take a look. All right, inside the Wayfarer, you can see it's got the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter chassis, which we like. It's got a small, small bed up top. I mean, it is absolutely minuscule, but it does have a window. We like that feature. As you come in the door, you'll see there's two recliners. I think it may be available also in a dinette. Uh, we'll let you know. We're gonna go take a look at that next. You see, it's got these nice, cool reading lamps. Plenty of storage overhead. Back here, you've got a curtain that separates the front area from the back area. Now, right now it's set up as a couch. Rose, check out the couch. Tell me how comfy that is. Oh yeah, look at her, she's right at home. That pad behind her is not a window though. Let me show you one of the neat parts. This particular unit has a Murphy bed. So what you do is you take the cushions off the bed. This folds out. The bed comes down. And then the cushions go in the back. Now, as you know, we are a big fan of being able to leave the bedding on the bed and just fold it out of the way. And the Murphy bed allows us to do that. One of the things we love about this coach. Plus, how about that window back there? It's really nice. Across from the recliners, you've got your television. It's not a very big TV, but it's large enough. And you've got storage behind the TV. That's really cool. You've got your microwave and convection oven. You've got a decent sized sink. Actually, it's a pretty big sink. You've got your Dometic cooktop with two gas burners. I like having the outlets and USB ports up here and their hideaway as well. More storage underneath. Nice drawers. Look at this, it's a chopping board right here on the drawer. A decent sized refrigerator, <coughs> excuse me, a decent sized refrigerator with a separate freezer. We, we like that, more storage overhead. Another television for the bedroom. Plenty of storage space for your clothing and other items. And storage to hang your clothes up as well. Now, check out the shower in this unit. It is absolutely huge for a RV shower in a B plus. I mean, look at how much space I have. I mean, I have this much space and dig this shower curtain. How cool is that? You can even do your little art, you know? I don't know if you could see that. You could. <laughs> shower wand, a nice bowl sink. When was the last time you saw a bowl sink in an RV? Some storage underneath. That's porcelain, the porcelain bowl. We really like this floor plan. That's why this is gonna be contender number four. As we go around the outside of the Wayfarer, you'll see a feature we really like. You can set up your lounge chairs outside and watch TV while you enjoy nature. Up under here, you've got a bunch of storage that looks like the inverter. Very easy access for the inverter. And you know we had our inverter issues with the van, so it, having access is great. Back here, you've got a large propane tank. And you've got your water heater. This is a single slide unit. There's some more storage up underneath. And this is where your, your wash out, your flush out, there's an outdoor shower. There's hookups for your water. There's filters under there, easy access, and you've also got your gray and black water tank flush. It's kind of hard to see up under the slide, but there is some more storage up underneath. And look at that. It's got a Dirt Devil central vacuum. On the inside, there's a hose hookup. You just plug your hose right into the side of the wall and you've got your vacuum cleaner. What a great feature. 
All right, as we go through the show, we're finding out more and more and seeing exciting new things. The Our contender number four, you remember, was the Tiffin Wayfarer, and it had kind of a gray interior. Look at how light and bright this interior is. This is an identical model, but just the different woodworking and the different, different upholstery. Rose is in heaven. She loves this look, and so do I. Thumbs up to Tiffin. Thumbs up to the Wayfarer. We are so super excited about this one. One other difference between this unit and the first one we looked at is that this unit is totally electric. It's got an induction cooktop. There is no gas burner, but there also is no propane tank up underneath. As you can see, the propane tank has been replaced by a diesel heater. That's the heater for the coach. It runs on diesel fuel. There is no propane in this unit. Hey, here's, here's where they're hiding all the controls, right, above, right in plain view. All your controllers right here, easy access, right below the sound bar. You know, the more we look around this unit, the more surprises we find. Look at this, underneath the sofa bed, or sofa. These are the cushions for the front seats. All the tables store under here nicely. This is a large storage compartment under here. Thumbs up for that. What do you think, Rose? Premium TV watching position? It's perfect for me. And at number four, we've got the Thor Gemini Class B+. We did a full tour of this one. Rose absolutely loves the floor plan, and so I do. do I. It's wide open. It's a small unit. It's about 22 and a half feet long, but it has some shortcomings, and it doesn't have a lot of space compared to some of the other units Which we've I seen. Need. Uh, the bathroom's a little tight, even though it is a dry bath. It's got a regular shower curtain, which we were kind of iffy about. But other than that, it's a it's beautiful a, yeah, unit. It is. We love the floor plan. Uh, it's comfy inside. Uh, it is on a Ford Transit, which we're not sure about. We really have a preference, I for think, the for Mercedes. the Mercedes chassis. Yeah. But it's a beautiful RV, and that's why it's coming in on our list at number four. Coming in in the third spot is the 2024 Thor Tiburon 24 FB. Now, this is a Class C. It's got a bed above the driver's compartment. I told you we would be considering Cs, and this is one. It's about 24 and a half feet long, so it's on the larger side. It is a little bit wider, being a Class C, but we love the floor plan. It's I great. Love it. It's beautiful. It's got the dinette. It's got the Murphy bed. It's got the bathroom in the back, which yep. Rose really likes. Yep. It's got a separate shower. And it's on the Mercedes Sprinter chassis. There wasn't a lot we didn't like about this unit. I mean, it is, it's a two wheel drive. Uh, we kind of prefer all wheel if we can get it. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's really comfortable inside. Uh, the fit and finishes, you know, we have some concerns with the Thor name. People have been telling us things. And you can see a little bit inside uh, you know, some of the drawers are not of the highest quality and just the fit and finishes, but we're nitpicking because we really love this coach. We do. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to number two. Okay. All right. At number two, the runner up, it's the Pleasure Way Plateau XLTS. Yep. This unit had everything that we wanted when we started looking at the show. Yep. We outlined certain things we wanted. It has a dry bath with a separate shower. More space. It has more space. It's got the rear lounge, which is similar to the unit that we have right now. It has it all. In fact, if our requirements hadn't changed change. <laughs> halfway through the show, this is probably the unit we would have chosen because this unit is perfect for us. It is. Before we knew what we really wanted. And before the compromise, because we had to, or let's just say, I had to make a compromise for more space. This unit is perfect, it's 22 and a half feet long, it's the right size, it's got the right setup, it's got plenty of room, but Rose needs more space. And you know what? It's all about compromise when you're trying, trying to find the perfect RV, because to tell you the truth, there may not be the perfect RV, but we can get darn close. Yep. 
Yep. And first on the list is the 2024 Tiffin Wayfarer 25RW. It is a Class C RV, but as you can see, it's got the B-plus aerodynamics. That's a plus. Yep. It's built on the Sprinter 3500 chassis. It's dually wheels. It does not have all-wheel drive, which is a little bit of a negative. We kind of like the all-wheel drive, yeah. but it is definitely not a deal breaker. We absolutely love the interior. It's got one of our favorite features, the Murphy bed. That allows us to keep our bedding in place. When we get up in the morning, we just flip up that bed, and when we flip the bed back down in the evening, it's ready to go. What a time saver and an aggravation saver. Yes. One of our favorite things about the RV and, and what sort of sold us on it was the size of the shower. It's got a rear bath and it's got a huge shower pan and a really cool shower door, as you saw in the video. Yeah. Uh, it's... Well, what sold me was the kitchen. I have plenty of room in the kitchen now to cook my meals. Yeah, um, and, and this unit is an all-electric unit. There is no propane tank. It's got the induction cooktop, which we are used to. A lot of people you know, may have uh, problems with that, but we, we don't. We're used to it. This unit has dual recliners. That is a definite plus. They are so comfy. <laughs> and it's got the couch. And in front of the bed is a TV, but also there's a second TV in front of the recliners. So if one of us wants to watch a show in bed, the other one wants to watch a show on the recliners, we've got plenty of options. That's a super plus. <laughs> also, if one of us wants to get out of bed and not disturb the other, we can go over to the yeah. other side of the coach, jump in the recliner, and do what we got to do, work or watch the other television. It's it's just a really neat design. Yeah. We had thought that we might prefer the dinette, but after looking at this one and the comfort, oh my God, the comfort of those recliners. Oh. It so, kind of sold us. Yeah. And the last thing that sold us on this is it's a Tiffin. All right. Tiffin says quality. It's a quality build. You can see the difference in the fit and finishes from some of the other units that we looked at. It is, it is, really elegant inside the floor is nice easy, easy to clean, to, easy to clean. Uh, I, there's just a lot of advantages to this coach as we said before there is no such thing as the perfect rv but the unit behind us comes as close as we're going to find we highly recommend if you're in the market for an rv or coach that you go to one of these large rv shows or even the 2025 Florida RV Super Show in Tampa because you're going to be amazed at what you see. Just remember to keep an open mind, keep your expectations fluid, and you may be able to find the perfect RV for you as we found the perfect RV for us. Thank you for joining us on this video. Stay tuned for more content. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to smash that like button, hit the notification bell, so you'll be told whenever we put out a new video. Have a great day. Happy travels.